Okay, let's go and figure out this percent question without a calculator. Now, a lot of you are saying, oh my goodness, I need my calculator. I cannot do any math work without my calculator. Well, listen, I understand that. But uh, this is not that difficult if you truly have a good solid foundation on what percent is and how to solve percent problems. So the question is, three is what percent of 20? If you think you can figure this thing out without your calculator, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct result here in a second, and then I'm going to uh, walk through this uh, uh, solution step by step so you can see that this is not that difficult of a problem. And when it comes to practical math, if there's one thing that you need to know in math, for kind of like, uh, you know, surviving the real world. That is understanding this symbol right here, the percent symbol. Just think about how uh, many times a day you see this symbol. If you really kind of thought about it, we see this thing all day long. If you're at the store, you're watching TV and some commercial comes on, you're looking at your bills, your credit card, they're talking about credit cards, mortgage rates, inflation, they're talking about percent. So you definitely want to understand percent. But anyways, we're going to get to all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love uh, helping people learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, especially if you struggle. Okay, If you failed math before in the past, it really that doesn't have anything to do with your potential to learn math. It's an unfortunate thing. And yes, you'll need to do some review to make up on the stuff that you didn't understand. But uh, too often, uh, too many students, you know, they associate, oh, I failed, so therefore I'm not smart enough to learn math or I'm capable of learning math or I'm failing right now. There must be something wrong with uh, with you yourself. I'm telling you that there's, there's nothing wrong with you, okay? You can absolutely... Uh, be successful. But what you need is three things. One, you need to work hard, right? You got to have the desire to learn, right? So if you give up, then, you know, that's going to be tough to learn anything if you, you know, don't want to learn it. So one, you got to work hard. You got to stay committed. The second thing is you need encouragement. You need someone telling you that you can do this. And I am telling you, I'm not lying to you, that you absolutely can be successful in math. But the secret formula here is um, you need great math instruction. So when someone's teaching you math, you actually have to understand what they're saying. You need clear, understandable, and comprehensive, in-depth math instruction. If you have all those little parts that I just talked about there, you're going to be successful in math. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of test that you're getting ready for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well because uh, far too many students really don't take good enough notes. Um, it's kind of... You know, it's just way too common uh, when you look at uh, in terms of how well students take notes. Maybe like 10, 15 percent of the students uh, take excellent notes. And those are the same students who are getting A's and A pluses in classes. So if you want to improve in mathematics, improve your grade, start taking better notes. But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to figure out uh, uh, what the answer is. And let me show you the correct answer right now. Three is what percent of 20? Well, three is 15% of 20. So 15% is the answer. Okay, so how did you do, right? Hopefully you didn't use your calculator, but if you're like, listen, I'm gonna get my calculator out and figure this thing out. Listen, that's good too. Uh, matter of fact, you definitely earned yourself a nice little uh, happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars to celebrate your success with percent. So nice job. Hopefully you didn't use your calculator because I really want to uh, speak to you know, solving problems without your, uh, the aid of a calculator because we just typically tend, uh, it's normal, you know, for all of us to be overly dependent upon technology. So we need to kind of go back to some old school math and put that calculator away from time to time or we'll lose those math skills. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and talk about how we got this answer. 
So a good place to start is to just def, um, think about what does percent mean? Well, here's the question. Three is, per, uh, three is what percent of 20? All right, so this is the question we want to answer. So we want to answer a question about percent. So what is percent? Well, you know, some of you uh, might be saying, well, isn't it like uh, when we have a number like 18 and we put that little percent symbol behind it? Yes, that's what percent is. But what is it? What's the definition of percent? Well, here it is, uh, more or less. So it's uh, percent is effectively, uh, I'm going to kind of uh, make this you know, very non-technical. It's a fraction where the denominator is 100. When we compare a number to 100, we're talking about percent. So if, for example, I have 7 over 100, I'm comparing a number to 100, 7 over 100, I can express as 7%, okay? So again, if you have a fraction and the denominator is 100, whatever the numerator is, okay, this value right here is the percent, okay? So 7 over 100 is the same thing as 7%. So that's effectively the definition of percent. Now, another good way to think about percent is percent being a part out of, of a whole. So 7 out of 100, uh, you can kind of think of as 7 parts out of 100, or this would be the part, and 100 would be the whole. So this is a useful kind of a model to think of what percent is as well. So in this particular problem, we want to know what 3, uh, three is what percent of 20. So what part of 3 out of 20 what is the percent? Okay, so this would be the part, and 20 would be the whole. So we could say, all right, 3 over 20, uh, this is the part, and 20 would be the whole. So that can also get us the percent. Um, we can uh, also determine the percent, but then in this kind of setup, uh, we will need a calculator. Well, it, we don't necessarily need a calculator, but you're going to have to take 3 and divide it by 20. So you're going to have to go like this, and you're going to have to work with decimals and all that kind of good stuff. So a lot of you are not going to want to do that. You're going to be like, I'm going to need my calculator. So for those of you that did this with the calculator, you probably did it this way. You said, okay, 3 divided by 20 is 0.15 as a decimal. Okay. So this is uh, this is a decimal answer. This is not a percent. Okay. So how do we convert a decimal to a percent? Well, you simply multiply by 100 or we move the decimal point over two places to the right. So in this case, that would be 15%. But um, again, here, this problem, you know, for the most part, is going to be very, you know, uh, uh, not, it's not going to be that much fun uh, to, do, uh, to do a problem like this without your calculator, because you're going to be dealing with decimals, etc. There's an easier approach, and what we want to do is go back to the definition of percent, okay? What if we can kind of rewrite this situation and have a uh, fraction where the denominator is 100? Well, we can do that, and it's not that difficult, okay? So here's our situation. We know the part out of the whole. We have 3 over 20, but I would certainly love to have a fraction where the uh, denominator is 100, okay? Currently, my denominator here is 20, but boy, wouldn't it be nice if the denominator was 100? Well, let's just go ahead and make it 100. How can I make this number right here, 20, how can I make that into 100? Easy, right? I could just multiply by 5. So if I take that 20 and multiply by 5, that it turns into 100. So you can do that as long as you multiply the respective numerator by 5. So in mathematics, uh, when it comes to fractions, you're not breaking the fraction or changing the value of the fraction if you multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. So if I take that 20 multiplied by 5, I get 100. And then 5 times 3 is what? 15. Now I have a new fraction, 15 uh, over 100, whereas if I reduce that fraction, it's the same thing as 3 over 20. But I like this version because I can easily see the uh, answer here. 15 over 100, this is the uh, by definition the percent, 15 percent. Okay, so hopefully uh, this is the path you pursued, but if you did this even in a kind of different way than I'm even talking about, as long as you understand what you're doing and you did this thing without a calculator, you definitely earned yourself a happy face in my book. But just remember, percent is extremely important, 
not just for math students, but just practical everyday uh, living, all right? Now, so much depends on your understanding of percent, especially when it comes to your personal finances and money, etc. All right, so if you need additional help with percent, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel about percent, but if you're looking for some like more formal instruction, just basic math, percent, and things like that, I'm gonna strongly suggest you check out my Math Foundations course. It's a little mini course that I have, a little uh, three chapter mini course uh, that kind of covers some basic elementary kind of math, uh, place value, percent, fractions, all this kind of good stuff that probably most of us forgot because you know you get away from this stuff, you know, you get rusty uh, because we use our calculator all too much. But anyways, I would definitely recommend that course if you're looking to kind of brush up on some basic math skills. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.